you do take your seats. And uh, you know, it, it, it's great to take the time to just pause and remember what Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. And while it was uh, a humiliating experience, it was also the cross of love. It was the cross of love. And we, you know, uh, there are some verses from Isaiah 53. You know, the, the prophet Isaiah wrote those words that's like 700 years before Christ came, before Christ was crucified. And uh, the, the verses from Isaiah 53 gives us insight into what was accomplished through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Indeed, it was God's purpose that His own beloved Son should die this way, out of love, out of love for you and I. In Isaiah 53, Verses 3 to 5 says, He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and was esteemed, and we esteem him not. Verse 4 says, Surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our evil deeds. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds. We are healed. By his wounds, we are saved. By his wounds, we are restored into a relationship with God the Father. Isaiah sees so many years before the event actually took place, he sees the Christ dying in the sinner's place. This, my friends, is the heart of the gospel message. That Jesus took your place and mine. Without a cross, there will be no forgiveness of sin, no salvation, and no hope. He took our infirmities. He took our sorrows, our transgressions, our iniquities. He took them all, Jesus, he took them all to the cross. What he suffered, the pain, the brutality, the indignity, it was all for us. Jesus came, Jesus came to lift the heavy burden of sin and the pain of living in this sinful world. He was hated. Uh, we did not, we did not think well of him, but he came to die for us, nevertheless. Today, when we feel rejected, when we feel abandoned and are falsely accused, Jesus walked that path too. When there is grief. When there is physical suffering and when we are being even judged by others, Jesus is familiar with these feelings and emotions. So we can turn to him today. We can turn to Jesus to receive grace, to continue to live for him. In, in, in verse 4, Isaiah foretells of a suffering Savior, a, suffer, a suffering servant, a Savior 
who are there in griefs or troubles and carry our sorrows. Yes, this is Jesus who would step into the, uh, the painful experiences of his people and bring relief from the loads that weighed them down. The load of sin was too much to bear. We could not carry it ourselves. And then on the cross, Jesus willingly lifted it for us by suffering, shedding his blood and dying. And then he arose again, defeating sin and death. This is gospel message. This is gospel truth here, friends. This is indeed the Savior and what he has done for us. He is indeed our Savior. And we can say, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for going where we could not have gone ourselves. He lifted our burdens. God drew us near to him in Jesus Christ to restore us into a relationship with him. Today, I, I, I want to encourage our hearts, I want to remind all of us that your pain, your sorrow will never have the last, the last word. Amen. Jesus' blood-stained cross reminds us today that His love has lifted the burdens we carry. Sickness, sin, every negativity upon Him was placed so that those who believe in Him could be set free. This is the cost He had to pay to enable men to be forgiven and to break the power of sin in their lives. Many of us can testify to the saving grace of God in our own lives today. Delivered from these negatives and failures. We can testify of being forgiven. Jesus did that. So we can experience his peace, his joy, his salvation and redemption, and fellowship with him once again. The fellowship that was broken when he created us. And this way, this way we become a people of, uh, you know, with a heavenly mindset. We become people of his heavenly kingdom. And in that kingdom, there are no barriers, there are no walls. The kingdom of, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, all barriers come down. All barriers come down. When Jesus said, when Jesus said it is finished, all barriers came crashing down. We can have a relationship with our, with our God. We can call him Father. We become his children. We are accepted into the family of God. Amen. You look at uh, if, if, if Paul's letter to the Ephesians in, in Ephesians chapter 2. But now you belong to Christ Jesus. At one time you were far away from God. Now you have been brought close to Him. Christ did this for you when He gave His blood on the cross. And we have peace because of Christ. He broke down the walls that divide us. At that time when Paul was writing to the Ephesian churches, the, the Ephesian church there, they, you know, there, there, were, there were arguments between the Jews and the Gentiles. He stopped the fighting by his death on the cross. Jesus is our peace. Because we are one in Christ by faith in what He has done. The barriers have been broken down, friends. The language Paul uses here in Ephesians 
it, you know, it's a, it's a powerful, it's a powerful description of how the presence of Christ unifies believers. Now, now that there's relationship with God, there's also reconciliation with people who were once hostile to each other. They're united in, with Christ and there are no divisions among the believers. Such is the power of the Savior's cross even for us today. We can rejoice today. Yes, we, you know, when we reflect, it's a solemn moment, but we can rejoice today because the finished work means that we are redeemed, friends. We are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Jesus' perfect sacrifice on the cross satisfies the holiness and righteousness of God. Sin is awful in God's sight. And we may never imagine how awful it is. But it separates us from God. We can have no true fellowship with God and with others without the cross being central to that. And God then had to act and he acted in love. And we can never fully grasp the immensity of his love for us. But as you look at the cross, you will grow in wonder at the vastness of God's love. So we can live daily with thankfulness for the demonstration of God's love to us. Today, there, there are many ways, you know, Good Friday, you know, there, there are many different facets of, 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 the, of the cross that we can talk about. But I, I want to just emphasize about relationships today. Think about your relationship with each other. Is there a wall? Is there a division? We, as believers in Christ Jesus, we receive reconciliation with God. And we can extend that to our fellow brothers and sisters, to those with whom we may, we, we may, we may have differences. You are here and you do not know Jesus as your Savior. I urge you, come to Him today and receive forgiveness from the Savior, Jesus. Let him, let him lavish you with his love, unconditional love. As I said earlier, we are going to participate in communion today. And as we do so, maybe a time between you and God, allowing the Spirit to search your own heart. Whether it's reconciling with one another, drawing closer to God, whatever the heart matter might be, let this time of communion bring healing, restoration, and life afresh. Remember, our loved ones are not here with us today. Let us reach out to them as we take engage in this act of communion, let it be that God brings healing, restoration, and a life afresh that he gave to us. In a few minutes, we will um, share with you how we are going to do communion. Now we would like to sing um, Oh to see the dawn of the darkest day. So let us keep in that attitude of drawing near to Jesus uh, uh, as we look to taking communion in a few more minutes. Let us all stand and sing. 